Good morning. Uh, Monday, June 8th. Uh, we have a lesson today on organic reactions. It is our last topic of the school year. I'll be working on it throughout the course of this week. And uh, come Friday, uh, I'll be preparing your last uh, Kessel Learning Assessment. And then uh, we'll be done for uh, school year for the most part. I mean, you guys will have until Wednesday to get everything turned in. I'll accept everything um, through Wednesday, of course. And, uh, you know, hopefully things start to settle out in our lives. Things normalize over the summer. And, you know, maybe I'll get to see many of you uh, once again back in September. But uh, here we go for today. All right, we're doing reactions. <clears throat> I'm going to cover about half the reactions today. Uh, I'm going to do the first three that come up uh, in the book. I'm going to talk about combustion, which we've already learned, uh, just not in regards to organic chemistry. Uh, I'm going to talk about combustion. Uh, two halogenation reactions. Uh, addition and um, substitution. Addition and substitution look very similar to some of the other reactions that we've had. I've actually discussed these kinds of reactions where we're doing the four basic types of reactions. Uh, single replacement, double replacement, synthesis, decomposition. A couple of the reactions that we're looking at today fall into what looks like those categories. They're really not. They're, they're considered different, uh, considered organic reactions, but they, they look very similar on paper. And I did... Uh, teach you at that time about, uh, what's the name of that reaction? Combustion, sorry, the first one. Uh, I did teach you about combustion as one of the basic types of reactions, even though it's not one of the four main categories of reactions that we discussed. Combustion is common enough that it needed to be addressed at that time, and I'm going to address it again. That's actually what I'm going to start with. So I'm going to title this up, Organic. Reactions, okay, title it up, Organic Reactions, and uh, the first one is Combustion, okay. uh, you may remember that combustion uses oxygen, combustion refers to burning, uh, generally when say uh, combustion is more or, or more rapid burning, like you talk about a candle burning, you don't necessarily think of it as undergoing combustion, but you think of gasoline burning in a car engine as a combustion. Combustions can be uh, as powerful as an explosion. Uh, diesel fuel or gasoline inside a car engine actually explodes uh, to produce pressure and a driving force to push a piston down to to give rotation to a, a crankshaft to you know make an automobile move. Uh, or combustion can be slow, like burning paper or an alcohol lamp, okay? Or it's not really called combustion at that point in time. It's, it's referred to as oxidation, but combustion is uh, a redox reaction. When something rusts, metal rusts, iron rusts, uh, it's combined with oxygen in the air. So it's oxidizing. That's a form of combustion. And uh, a lot of the tech uh, weapons that they use for the military... Uh, use like uh, magnesium powders or aluminum powders and these combine with the oxygen in the air and turn into a, a solidified magnesium oxide or something and they cause a giant collapse in uh, air pressure. Okay, they're, they're, they're what they call uh, cave buster bombs. They go in, the magnesium, there's an initial explosion, probably a more uh, conventional explosion out, uh, sending out powdered magnesium very high temperatures, it combines with the oxygen in the air and sucks all the oxygen in the air in forming oxides, metal oxides or solids, where carbon dioxide would be gas. It wouldn't be that way like if you're running your barbecue or something, but uh, if you're burning a metal, it would start to pull air in because you would create a solid, take the oxygen out of the air, creating a solid. So just to reiterate, combustion uses oxygen. This is organic chemistry, the chemistry for the most part of hydrocarbons and their derivatives. So the general format for a combustion would be C, H, with, I don't know what numbers, okay, it could be a lot of them, it could be an alkene, alkene, alkyne, 
It could be a 1 to 2, more than 1 to 2, or less than 1 to 2, depending. Uh, even 1 to 1 in some cases. Benzene, acetylene, which is C2H2 acetylene, benzene C686. They have these 1 to 1 formulas. But the CH compound is going to combine with O2, and you're going to get oxides of carbon. So that would be insufficient oxygen. There's not enough oxygen. You won't get CO2. You might get CO or in particular carbon. That's the problem with diesel automobiles. Diesel automobiles, those uh, shorter chain hydrocarbons uh, explode under somewhat lower pressure and they don't burn completely. And then you would also get oxides of hydrogen, which would be water. Okay, So it's the hydrocarbon to burn, oxygen, CO2, H2O, and then, you know, they would require balancing. We're really not going to talk about balancing at this point in time. We're looking at uh, the predicting of products. So if you see hydrocarbon plus oxygen, your answer is going to be CO2 and H2O. They're not going to ask you about incomplete combustion. They're going to ask you about complete combustion. Complete combustion gives CO2 and H2O. Okay. Uh, next organic reaction. All right. The next reactions both fall under the cal category of what we refer to as halogenation. There are two types of halogenation. There's addition and substitution. In the addition reaction, it's not necessarily called halogenation. It's called hydrogenation. It's the same type, only instead of using the halogen, hydrogen is used, and an additional catalyst is needed because hydrogen is not as reactive as the halogens in this format. I'm going to show you addition first. And I'm going to put in parenthesis synthesis. Two to one. I can't fit my parentheses in, but my parentheses is actually here. Okay? Or well, you can't see it because my head is in the way. All right, there's another parentheses here. This says addition. And remember, we learned the four basic types synthesis, which is the combining. It's going to take it two things to one format. Again, the. Uh, Okay, the computer looked like it glitched a little bit. I had to pause, something happened, and uh, I had to address it and come right back. But uh, I apologize for that. Uh, halogenation is going to use a halogen. If it's a hydrogen, they call it hydrogenation. Now, in these reactions, we need a double or a triple bond. That would be an E-N-E -E or a Y-N-E. -N -E. And what happens, in order to add the halogen in, bonds will have to break. I'm going to do a very simple example using uh, fluorine to acetylene, which by UPAC name is known as ethyne. Let me see if I can uh, sketch this out for you here. Okay. So I have this formula, C2H2 which is ethyne, right? It's a Y-N-E. It's going to have a triple bond. It's a double plus two, okay? It's a double plus two. So, a, pardon me, a double minus two. Two times two is four. Minus two is two. If we draw it out structurally, it would be H dash C, triple bond C dash H, okay? This has four bonds. This is four bonds. To the ethyne, I'm going to add a halogen. I'm going to draw fluorine just because. Remember, the halogens are diatonics. So it's plus F2. All right. So now, during the halogenation reaction, right, it's an addition. These have to add in. How's fluorine going to add in if carbon already has its maximum number of bonds? Hydrogen only has one bond. Fluorine's bonded together. Right now, this fluorine looks like this. F bond F. Right? So how are they going to bond in? 
Well, what happens, we break the bond on the fluorine. Now we have three fluorines capable of making one bond. And now we're going to take one bond off the carbon carbon bond, right? That's why we need a YNE or an ENE because that bond has to break. And then those fluorines are going to add to the site where that bond was. I happened to put both of them on the bottom, but I could have put one on top, one on bottom, or one on bottom here, one on top. One was just one on each. Where we draw them in this uh, two-dimensional array, it really doesn't matter. In reality, they're actually at like 120 degree bond angles, like this. So it would actually be one here, one here. And again, it would flip and they rotate. So really where they are, it doesn't matter structurally. It's pretty much the same. Uh, that's the addition reaction. So ethine became 1,2-difluoroethene. Now, if this were hydrogenation, the addition of hydrogen, you could add hydrogen. Hydrogen is not as active as the halogens, so an additional catalyst, probably higher temperature would have to be used, but you can hydrogenate. Uh, if you look at certain vegetable oils and foods, sometimes you're going to see on the packages partially hydrogenated vegetable oils. Uh, vegetable oils are known to be polyunsaturates, which are actually better fats. Unsaturated fats are better, but then they hydrogenate them. So put hy hydrogens in and turn them into more saturated fats, which are less healthy for us, but they give better consistency in food production. Okay, But that's the addition reaction. Simple enough. Okay. All right. The other one is called substitution. Okay. And this looks like a double replacement reaction. It's going to be two to two. Okay. And it really does look like double replacement. Uh, I'm trying to remember there was a, a regions question one year where they asked to identify the type of reaction and I think you were supposed to write substitution as the answer but the scoring guides did accept uh, double replacement because it, it does look like it is a replacement reaction so they accepted replacement used living name substitution that's the proper name but uh, it looks a lot like it, and there have been confusion with students on exams. And the part two is where you get to write your answers. If it was multiple choice, and it said uh, replacement and substitution, substitution is the answer. No, no question. Can't accept two multiple choice answers. You have to accept the one that's better. Uh, so if it's, you know, written response, it's close enough, we can take it. Not that it matters this year anyhow, right? Okay, substitution. Substitution is going to occur with the alkanes. All right, the ones with only single bonds. All right, the ones with only single bonds, uh, the saturated hydrocarbons. And what happened? One halogen substitutes into the structure. I mean, there are more complicated reactions. Um, they do um, a variety of things like if it's a long chain hydrocarbon it can go on a, a primary or secondary carbon there are rules to know where it goes we generally do just very simple structures here ethane, methane I don't even think they would go as far as propane because then you would have to determine where it's going to be on a primary secondary carbon and it's not uh, within the syllabus so you don't have to worry about it it'll be simple just like I'm doing I'm going to do the simplest possible version. Uh, methane, which is CH4. I'm drawing the hydrogens in here instead of just the plain um, uh, skeleton because it's important where the hydrogens go. And we're going to combine this also with fluorine. That would be the halogen. It's a halogenation reaction. It's halogen substitution. And what's going to happen, the same thing. A fluorine is going to substitute for one of the hydrogens. But carbon already has four bonds. It only makes four bonds. So in order for one of these fluorines to come in, a hydrogen has to come off. So I'm going to draw the other side down here. Okay. A 
when fluorine goes in, right, and now we get fluoromethane, fluoromethane, and now we had two S before, we have an F left over, and we lost one of the H's from the CH4, because now it's CH3, we're also going to get HF, hydrogen fluoride. So there are two reactants, methane and fluorine. And then for products, we get fluoromethane and hydrogen fluoride. Okay, that's um, halogenation by substitution. Okay. Uh, that's it for today, just those three reactions. You can start looking at the reaction section. And we'll be doing the problems in them this week. Uh, between Monday and Tuesday, I'll go through the rest of them with you. Uh, what page are we on? Like... We are currently on page uh, 206. I did combustion, substitution, and addition. Uh, esterification, saponification, and fermentation, which you see on the next page. Uh, very straightforward. There's no examples, really. We just learn what they are. Okay. Uh, and then the polymerizations, too. And then there'll be... A few questions on the next two pages. It's like 49 to 70. So like 20 questions. So I'll be, you know, doing lessons on those uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then Friday you'll get the final assessment. And uh, we survived the coronavirus, right? Uh, all right. Have a great day today, folks. Uh, talk to you later on in the week. Bye-bye.